Hey guys, we got uh, Jackson here. He's a little beefcake of a dog who just came in. He's gonna be here with us for a week. Um, he's been in training when he was young for a while, but uh, things got a little bit shaky over time as, uh, as he's been out of training for quite a while. He's had a prong collar on before. Uh, you could tell he's really used to it being something to fight against. Um, he's used to kind of resisting it and tuning it out and not really paying a ton of attention to the handler. Um, or seeing the, the collar and the leash as uh, something to be opposed to rather than something to work with. So I'm just going to show a little bit of how we introduce a dog to a tool like this. I'd be doing the same thing as I would do even if he had never had a prong collar on before. Um, how I introduce him to the collar and the way that we use it and then to the leash and the way that we use the leash to start to, to get, get his attention a little bit, get him in a little bit more of a cooperative state of mind. Um, that we can proceed further with all the rest of our training. So the first thing we go for is always that sense of cooperation um, and getting the dog to be soft on the leash and to be soft on the collar and see it rather than as a, as a restriction tool or something to, to fight against, see it as a communication tool and something to work with. So here we go. Once you get it out of his mouth. There we go. All right. stubbornness that he's used to. This is what we saw pretty much right when he came in the front door. He doesn't want to go somewhere, he just doesn't go. What's important here is not to force the dog along. So I'm a bigger animal than him, he knows that. That's not the idea. I'm going to put pressure on the collar, I'm going to keep my energy going in the direction that I want to go. And the moment he gives in just a little bit, I'm going to give in a lot, right there. He can resist again, no problem. The moment he gives in a little, I'll give in a lot. Right there. Again. So he needs to see that his choices affect whether or not he feels pressure on the collar or not. Good. And he does this on any type of collar, so it's not just a prong collar. He would do this on a slip lead, on a flat collar. The reason that I'm opting for the prong collar is because the amount of strength that this dog has for his size on a flat collar or a slip collar, he'd actually resist so hard that he'd be putting quite a bit of pressure on his trachea and his larynx. Believe it or not, the prong collar is actually the safest option right now for a dog like this, um, so that you're not restricting his breathing as we're going through this process. Make sure that uh, you guys watching can see the actual leash work going on. It's important that I'm not just waiting for him to go into the leash, but when I feel him stop resisting, I actually relax the leash pressure myself. If I'm actually giving the leash back to him as a way to communicate that I appreciate that sort of transition from resistance to cooperation. Some people will look at this and they'll see that when there's pressure on the leash, he's licking his lips a lot, he's doing a lot of behaviors that um, signal that the dog is stressed. Yes, he's stressed. Um, that's inevitable. Things in life are going to occur where dogs get stressed. Um, there's a, a sort of a fad these days that people want to shelter dogs from any kind of stress that could ever happen in the world. Um, not only is that unrealistic, but it's incredibly foolish. 
animals, humans, children, adults, we all need to learn how to cope with stressors in our lives and that we can't always get things our way. If you never address this sort of confrontation or this sort of resistance in the dog, it's gonna rear its ugly head somewhere. I'd so much rather address it in a situation like this where I'm in control and I can do it in a sort of a fair and balanced way rather than when it, when it comes up in a real world scenario um, that could be dangerous um, or could, could push him to his limits where you might get aggression or anything like that. So the more we can, we can teach him how to cope with stressors and cope with pressure in a controlled way, the more stable he's going to become and the less likely we are to, to have to deal with those problems later on in life. So I'm being very fair with him. Like I said, I'm not going to drag him along. I'm not yanking and cranking when he's being resistant. But he is fighting against the leash, and, and I'm not going to give in to that. You know, he's been living for a long time uh, with the mindset that that stuff works out really well for him. And uh, it's important that he learns that it doesn't work anymore. There's a much easier path, which is just to move when he feels pressure on the leash to just go with it. So the stress is somewhat self-induced by him. And yeah, he's stressed. No, it does not bother me in this context because it's going to go away by the end of the week. This dog is going to be moving incredibly smoothly on the leash and you're not going to see any of this stress going on at all. And in fact, his life is going to be a whole lot easier than what it's been, um, you know, having to sort of fight all along the way. steps of leash work and building that cooperative mindset is going to go a really long way to making all the future obedience that we do go really, really smoothly. Riding him along with food at this point, you might get the sort of outward behavior that you want in the moment, but you're never addressing the moment or the problem that will occur when you don't have food and he really wants to do something else. So the time when he does not want to do what you're asking him to do or what you need him to do. It's great to use food and to make the dog want to do things, but the reality is that in the real world, the dog does not always want to do what you need them to do. And it's really, really important to address those things and to teach the dog how to cope with it without all the fighting and without all the resistance. So you see already, he's getting quite a bit softer on the leash, and that's what we're going for. We're trying to create softness. Good. So we're already starting to get rid of some of that resistance. And all that resistance that he's built up in his mind, that's what's creating the stress. The leash, the prong collar, those aren't creating the stress. It's the fight in the dog. Good. So the softer I am with him, the softer he can become. It's my responsibility first as a human being. So just because he needed me to be a little bit firm a moment ago, doesn't mean I'm gonna assume that I have to be that firm every single time. I always give the dog the opportunity to take a good deal. I always give him the opportunity for softness first. If I need to be more firm, I will. So the idea is be as soft as you can be and as firm as you need to be. With the goal being to create a softer and more cooperative mindset in the dog. Good. Start to get to times like that where I barely even added any attention to the leash, and he's already starting to tune in a little bit more. <laughs> Good boy. Good job, buddy. Now that we've got a little bit more softness and we're going to continue to build more and more softness, we're also going to start to bring his attention up a little bit through movement. You can see he's cutting in front of me quite a bit when we're walking in straight lines. I will eventually 
work some yielding behavior into this by turning into him to teach him to respect my personal space a little bit more. Good. But I'm not as concerned with that right now. My main goal right now is to create a little more softness and a little more cooperation. Good. The yielding will come. I don't think he's intentionally trying to be dominant or uh, a jerk in any way. I think he's just not used to having to walk in a polite manner. So we'll go for shaking that first before I worry too much about the pushiness. So that's going to be a problem with left hand turns. When you're practicing yielding with a dog like this, who can get in front of you rather quickly, the angle of your left hand turn is rather important, but the speed of your movement is going to be essential as well to be able to get in front of him and yield properly without having to force him back with the leash or bump him with your knee. So you can see right there, he tried to jut out in front a little bit, and I just pick up my speed and sort of cut him off at an angle. Good. So you're starting to see the uh, behavior that we're looking to achieve here. walking the proper position that we want. And we never really had to use a, a lot of force or yanking and cranking on the leash. Simple movement, body language, clear information and leadership, and a little bit of patience. And this is the foundation of our leash work. We barely have to touch the leash here at this point. okay with him lagging behind like that right now. He's not doing it to be resistant. He's just giving me more space. He's following more. And I'm perfectly fine with that. He's being cooperative. So we're not going to drag him along in any way. That was a really nice little session. First session for him. We'll give him a little break. Work him again start layering in our place commands and other obedience behaviors. But that's how we, uh, that's how to get a dog started on the prone collar if he had never had one on before. And also working with a dog who's had one but has learned to resist it or fight against it. That's how we build in proper uh, mindset, cooperation, and, uh, and get the dog ready for more formal training.